Good morning and welcome to MCC of Baton Rouge. Will you pray with me this morning? God, we just thank you for bringing each and every one of us to this place. God, we thank you for helping us to be proud of who we are as your beautiful creation. And God, we just come here today to celebrate that. God, we ask that you fill us with your love and your joy and your peace and send us forth today so that others who come in contact with us know that we have the power of your love in our hearts. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. Will you tell somebody around you they're in the right place today? remember those killed in the concentration camps of the Holocaust, who were forced to wear a pink triangle to indicate their homosexuality. We call your attention to the pink ribbon behind the altar to represent all who wore the pink triangle and for which our community reclaimed as a badge of identity. We will remember her. We light the red candle in honor of Reverend Troy Perry, who after being ex excommunicated from his Pentecostal church, started a church in his living room in Los Angeles, California on October 6, 1968. That church has become the worldwide denomination and movement we call Metropolitan Community Church. We will remember. We light the orange candle to honor those patrons enjoying a drag show at the Stonewall Inn in New York City when a police raid interrupted the evening of June 28, 1969. Those patrons spilled into the streets and fought back against the police raids and intimidation and violence perpetuated on the gay community. We will remember. We light the yellow candle in honor of the thousands of people that decided it was time to come out of the closet and into the streets, starting the first annual gay pride parades one year and every year after the Stonewall riots. We will remember. We light the white candle in memory of those who were willing to come out but have been killed on American soil throughout our history. We especially remember the 29 people killed in the upstairs lounge fire in New Orleans on June 24, 1973. We will remember. We light the green candle in honor of Harvey Milk, an early civil rights leader who was assassinated while fighting for equal rights for the gay community. This year, he was chosen as the first openly gay person to be placed on a United States postal stamp. We will remember. We light the blue candle in honor of the Baton Rouge Pride Fest, started eight years ago as an MCC church picnic. Approximately 225 persons showed up with about 12 sponsors. Under the leadership of Pride Fest President Tom Merrill and his Pride Fest team, we had a record attendance yesterday of more than 5,500 attenders. We light the purple candle in honor of all who are still wait uh, waiting for equality. Equality in marriage, housing, business, and jobs. We pledge to continue the struggle for equality for all our sisters and brothers, no matter the label. We will remember. We are delighted today in case you don't know. Uh, I'm Reverend Keith Lazinga, the pastor here at MCCBR, and we're delighted to see some new faces with us today. We're delighted to see some folks that have been around for a while that have come home, and we always want you to know this is home. We always have a place to be welcome here in this place. Um, by the way, last year um, when I did the blessing with a straight female minister, 
Um, I was told that her soul was way gayer than mine. <laughs> signs and in, in the, there's, there's a poem that I see artwork done a lot um, in stores that says, sing like no one's listening, dance like no one's watching. Yes. Where's, where's, where is he? You were dancing. Where'd he go? Oh, there you are. That was some dancing. That was awesome. It was like, it was like you know, remember the, um, the old Charlie Brown cartoon shows that come on, the Snoopy does the happy dance? Up on top. That was like the happiest Snoopy dance I've ever seen. I love that. Sing like no one's listening, dance like no one's watching, love like you've never been hurt before. There's, there's different variations of that poem, but I've seen it in different forms. And, you know, it just speaks to being all that you are. Be everything that you can be in every way that God has made you. And it, the, that poem reminds me of the lyrics. Uh, it, it, it seems to go right with the lyrics of this song that talks about being the way you were made. It says, I want to be the way that I was made. I want to be the man I was meant to be. Sing like no one's listening. Live like there's no tomorrow. Dance like no one's around. Just be the way that God created you. Be the way that you were made.
last week. It was stirring up in here. Is that right? <laughs> I love it when that spirit comes alive and just, you know, it's rising up in you and you just can't help but dance, right? You were saying, I got to do the happy dance. Got to do it. Got to do it. That spirit comes up and alive in you and whatever was holding you down, whatever the dead stuff was, you know, that dead stuff falls away. We hear about the things of this world will fall away. We're born again. And so Paul talks about in Ephesians that, that new life that's given to us. In Ephesians 2, it's saying that because it's nothing we do, right? We don't, we don't have that kind of power. We can't. It's all because of God's grace and God's love that that new life begins in us. That whatever the things of this world, because boy, I get caught up in it, don't you? You know, just turn on the TV, or you don't even have to do that. Just, you know, let my brain go for about five seconds, and I can start getting caught up in the things of this world, right? And it just gets you, you get sucked into it. And that's what kills us. It just kills that spirit that wants to dance and do the Snoopy dance, right? It just kills that. And so that Christ being born in us, making us alive again, coming alive anew inside of us, that's what the resurrection is all about. Because it happens right here inside of us each and every time. And we can declare on pride or whenever that we're alive, right? We're alive with Christ in every second. And the beauty of that grace is that it doesn't ever stop. It just keeps coming back. Every time I fall down, there it is again lifting me back up. And so the dead stuff falls away, and I'm alive again and born in Christ. Yes. I used to live by the ways of the world. I used to think it was the way I was told. I breathed it in and I breathed it out It took me down and it pulled me out I'm no better than all the rest A poor excuse is all I have left The saving grace was all I could find So thank God it found me And now I'm alive I'm alive, I'm alive In Christ I am alive Made alive, made alive In Christ I am alive
So this past week, my partner and I have been traveling a little bit, kind of mixing some work in with some vacation and different places, and we saw some friends of ours up north in Indianapolis, and then we visited some of my family in Kentucky. And uh, I had a little challenge there with my folks. Um, Brian and I have been together eight years. I've been out since I was 26. I'm 45 now. And you know, it's still there. It's still something we have to deal with. And um, I'm grateful, you know, that Part of that challenge that I have with my family is not um, anything about, you know, oh, you're going to hell and God hates you and that kind of thing. But it's just different when it's your son, I guess. You know, when it's your own kid, um, they're still struggling with that. And so especially mom and I had some, some conversation this week. And the thing that, that gets me about those kinds of conversations, whether it's your family, it could be a close friend, whatever it is. And here we are on Pride Weekend talking about, oh, we need to be alive and be who we are and all that kind of stuff. But it's those kinds of um, conflicts or struggles or personal relationship um, challenges that you have that hurt the most, right? That just, whew, it just cuts you. It just, it's deep. It's deep. It's a wound. It's a wound that's inside of you. And I think the hardest thing about those kinds of wounds is the shame that comes with it. It's like you get embarrassed about how bad you're hurting, you know? And it's important for us to remember when we're in those moments of pain and those moments of struggle and those moments of challenge that that is a moment that God steps in. That that is a moment that grace can abound. Oh, yeah. that, and it's not like these magic words that are supposed to just make you go, oh, I feel so much better now, thank you. No, I know it's still hard. You know, the pain is still there. Um, but part of our faith is just knowing that in those moments of that absolute just woundedness, that that is the moment that God's grace and love steps in. That's all it means. That's all it really means is that here's an opportunity for healing to begin. That's all it means.
sometimes people ask me about um, my partner Brian and does he ever get to travel with me and sometimes he does he doesn't really like to fly and then he's also very involved in, uh, in the church in, in West Palm Beach so a lot of times he's active in what's going on there um, but I do like it when he gets to come with me every now and then because um, you know I, I travel almost every weekend and people will ask you know how is that on your relationship what's that like that must be really hard and the, the two things we have going for us in that is that um, one we met after I was already doing this, I think it would have been harder had we been together, and then all of a sudden I was gone three or four days a week, but it's, that's all we've ever known. So that kind of helps. And then the other thing is, Brian did the, you know, traveled from his teen years all the way through his 20s, um, and did revivals across the country, and visited churches, and so he knows what I'm doing, and so that helps a lot too. We, we have that faith core part of our foundation that just helps us understand what's happening. But, you know, sometimes the thing that I think for me, um, and, and for him too, we've talked about it before, that, that I miss the most when we're apart is that I tend to be gone on Sundays a lot. And it's rare that we're in church together at the same time. And when we are, typically one or both of us is doing something in the service. And so we're still not, you know, kind of waving at each other across the sanctuary. Hey, you know. And so, you know, I, I visit churches and I see people come together as couples to receive communion. And we miss that. You know, we don't get that. And it's, it's something that we really treasure in those moments that we get to have that. And how beautiful it is that here on Pride Weekend, you know, here you are in worship, whether you're single or whether you're with your partner, but just that we get to be together in love and to come together in that moment of communion and to share that that's what church is all about that's that that's that fellowship together you know that's that when two or more are together that, okay, that's why we're here that's why we come forward to have that meal together um so anyway this is a song if it's okay i was going to share a love song with you can i do that this song i wrote for brian so it's called closer <laughs>
was ahead of me. There's this cool scripture I like um, where, well, first of all, I think it's interesting a lot of times in the scripture when, you know, there's, there's a lot of them that we refer to for kind of the, the lift us up kind of scriptures, those things that we, you know, we turn to. We might all have our favorite scripture or our favorite verse. It's like that's the one we go to or maybe the handful that we go to and we're just kind of needing that little pick-me-up. Um, and so uh, one of those for me is, is, uh, that's, that's challenging to me. Is a, is a scripture that appears in one of Paul's writings again in 1 Thessalonians when he talks about and says, I will rejoice and give thanks in everything, always. I will pray continuously. And I'm like, yeah, I want to do that. I want to be that. I want to be able to just rejoice all the time and give thanks all the time and pray continuously in everything. But sometimes that's really hard to do. To go, well, thank you, God, so much for what I just went through. <laughs> you know, whatever. Thank you, God, so much for whatever just happened. When it seems like that's bad, you know, or it seems like that was something, why would I give thanks for that? Um, and so that's a challenging verse. That's a challenging verse. And I once heard... Um, Prayer defined, this is an old way over simplification, but I once heard prayer defined that, that there's really only two kinds of prayer. One is help me, and one is thank you. Right? Have you heard that before? And so um, there's this story of David where he's praying to God, and I think he kind of goes through this transition of help me to thank you. And he starts out going, okay, God, just how many people are there that are against me? Have you ever felt that way? Just how many people are there out there against me right now that are screaming at the top of their lungs, waving these wonderful signs and all that kind of stuff, right? When you're trying to get, just trying to get through a little narrow space to get into pride or whatever it is. And, or just maybe in your life or whatever. How many people are there out there that there are against me? How many are saying these horrible things about me? How many people are about to rise up? But then he kind of gets to this place where he says, but you, God, are my shield. You are my strength. I know that you are with me. And so I will rejoice and give thanks and pray continuously, right? You know, we find that moment. And, and, and David goes on to say, you know, I know that when I go to sleep and that when I close my eyes, um, I pray, God, that you will be with me. And that when I wake up, I know that you will be with me in my rising and I will not be afraid. Because, God, you will lift me high. Deliver me, God. Lift me up into your glory. And I will pray and rejoice continuously. I will give thanks in all things. I will rejoice and give thanks and pray continuously and say, Hallelujah. <laughs> I said, 
personality types, right? You ever had your personality type taken? I can't remember what that's called, but I, I tend to be kind of a really, really independent person, and I'm um, very driven to, you know, to try to move forward or whatever it is, and and, and, um, and there's, there's just, right, in all personality types, there's like the, the advantages to that, and then there's the disadvantages to your personality. Somebody's like, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> right? And, and sometimes, you know, we get focused on the disadvantages, but um, but for me, in my personality type, because of those, those characteristics, one of the things that happens is that I get so focused on whatever it is I'm trying to move forward on. And, and like I said, I can, I'm, like I said, since I'm kind of independent-minded, I, I enjoy being by myself. And I just, that's where you know, I just kind of get into my little zone, and I'm doing whatever it is I'm doing. Um, and that's where I notice sometimes the, that, that moment of, I was talking about before, we get sucked into the things of this world. And that's where that creeps in for me and my personality type is when I'm just like, so I think I'm focused on what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm missing, um, you know, God's spirit around me, God's movement around me, where God's intention might be for whatever it is, um, because I'm so focused on that. And so my prayers have become more and more that, you know, God just helped me to stop and find that still small part. I hate people who can do that. Just... <laughs> can anybody here do that? I love you if you can, I don't hate you, I love you that you can do that, because it's a gift, oh my gosh, to just be still and listen to that still, small, quiet voice and be in silence, I mean, it doesn't take half a second, my brain's going, duh, 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 duh. you gotta do this, get to that, and whatever, you know, you know whatever, did you see what they were wearing, and, you know, whatever, and so, <laughs> so, yeah, you know, and I just had to pray, God, please step in and just let, let you be what's inside of me. Let that spirit be inside of me. Let that new birth, let all that other dead stuff fall away because I need more and more and more and more of just you. Oh 
stuff that gets born inside of us, the other stuff we're going to get rid of, it falls away, we're dead to the things of this world, and we're revived, we're made new, we come alive, all the other things that get to fall away and, and just be without. And so sometimes, though, those revivals can be a little tricky, especially if it's happening inside of you. You know, you're getting ready to do the happy Snoopy dance, but some stuff has to be cleaned in the house before you can dance on top of it, right? <laughs> That's hard, you know, so you kind of have to hold on. Because it's going to be a trip. It's going to be a journey for that revival to start happening. And then all of a sudden, it's like, whoa, you know, this means things are different now. There's a change, right? Revival doesn't mean you go back to where you were just were before that, right? Hopefully. Revival is something new. Something that means we're going to move forward. Something that's different. Those are hard. Change is hard. Change is hard sometimes. Change is good, but change is hard. So that's that, that revival. It sounds, it sounds good. feels good. Something new. But sometimes it's scary. Sometimes you gotta just hold on and pray about it. You go, okay, God, I feel like something's coming up, and I sure hope I can dance at the end of this. Because, <laughs> you know, revivals are scary sometimes. Sometimes they're scary. But you know what? It's Pride Weekend, and not just this weekend, and not just today, not just here in this church, but in every moment of our lives, that's the promise of the good news of the gospel, is that the revival can happen again and again and again, and again, and again. And sometimes you think you're ready for it, and you're holding on, and then, whoops, I just wasn't quite ready, you know, but God's going to be with you through it, and it's going to happen again, it's going to happen again. And it's not just a one time. So if you get that happy dance, you think, oh, that was it. Now what's going to, you know, I'll never get that again. Yes, you will. There'll be another happy dance coming soon. You can do that. I can't wait to see Tom do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on, because the revival's coming. Just hold on. <laughs> Thank you. 
people thought I had a bodyguard. It was really kind of funny. You know, people started, for the first time in my life, I was important. You know, I mean, there's somebody to protect me, but it was really just to keep me on track and see if there's anything I need and run little errands. And it was like, it was so sweet and so wonderful. But then this person didn't even want me to tell anybody that it happened. There are so many people who do those sorts of things that it takes to keep not just pride running, but this yeah. church running. Yeah. You probably have no clue who made the little buckets up here today or how these magically appear. You know, and, and I know you've heard the wet, the, the, the wet team or the synthetic team, but which is mostly Mike and, and um, Rick. But actually, Aunt, our friend Angela came down one day and spent half a day with Mike making little buckets of flowers so that you could have those today. I could go on and on, but the reason I say all that is there are so many ways you can get involved in supporting MCC ministry in this church and in our community and other really worthy ministries and worthy organizations that you saw yesterday in Friday. All it takes is getting up out of the chair and saying, I want to do this. And God, I know you want me to do this. And if you want me to do the happy dance, I will do it. But next time I'm going to try to get somebody to stand between me and the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Will you pray with me, though, and remember your tests? This one's for Sean. This one's for your girl. God, we just thank you so much for all the gifts that you've given us. We thank you for the wonderful ministry that you do in our community, that you do in the church, that you do in us and through us, God. And God, we just ask that you open our hearts and open our, our minds. Help us, God, to see the ways that we can give back a part of what you've given to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Forgive us and help us to forgive ourselves. Hello? Yeah. To help us forgive ourselves for doing things that we shouldn't have done and, you know, for not doing those things we should have. Here at Metropolitan Community Church and in MCCs around the world, and today, World Pride is up in Toronto, Canada, and our own Metropolitan Community Church. Pastor Reverend Brett Paul is their main event. He is being honored for all of the work that he and MCC have been doing, not only in Canada, but around the world. I just want to say thank you to them and call attention to that and maybe even dedicate this communion to them and in honor of them. But I also want to say this, <clears throat> just as Jesus bread and the cup to everyone. That said to us, everyone is welcome at our table. Everyone. And here at this MCC and around the world, at all MCCs, we serve an open communion. That means you don't have to be a member of this church or any church. Mm. It means you don't have to be a member of our faith or any faith. It simply means you're welcome to come with us to the table. You're welcome to take part because we are all peers. We are all equal. We are all God's children. So, we invite you to the table of God. And all that we ask here at this church is you come as the ushers direct. There will be, by the way, prayer partners on either side if you have a special request you would like to send them to pray with you about. Otherwise, Dip it in the non-fermented grape juice, place it on your tongue, or if you so choose, cup your hands. We'll place it in your hands and you may serve yourself. For the acolytes and servants, please come forward. <laughs> Anointing name. 
traditionalists, you probably noticed for that. <laughs> There's a reason we do that, that we learned from Jonathan Hammond when he was starting out in ministry here at this church. And he said, God showed me something that we need to get away from one of our traditions of consuming everything on the table. We need to leave something for the ones that aren't there yet. So, oh well, we're just peculiar queer people. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed being in worship with us today. Would you rise and join us? Sean's going to lead us in our closing song, and then I'll give you a little further instruction as we leave today. <laughs> Wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> so, do y'all remember singing the song when you remember you were a kid in Bible school or in Sunday school or something? It goes, Rise and shine, and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine, and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine, and give God. You got to do the clap right there. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's Isaiah 60. That's the very first part of Isaiah 60. Rise and shine, children of the Lord. Give God your glory. Um, and then there's this part that comes a little later. You'll see here in the lyrics that's saying that we are created to be the joy of generations, it says in Isaiah. We are created to be the joy of generations. And then the part I really like, it says, we were made with an everlasting cry. Made, the scriptural, Isaiah 60. You were made with an everlasting cry. Not that you do something and then God's proud of you, but that's how you were made to begin with, right? So rise and shine, children of the Lord, and give God your glory. Right beyond the joy, we are made.
Sean Thomas to us. Thank you for a wonderful collision of the season of pride and the season of Pentecost. Thank you, God, because it just makes us all want to do the happy day. And whether we do it outwardly or inwardly, we thank you, God, because we can have the joy of generations, that we are the joy of generations, that you love us just the way you created us to be. And as I said Friday night, there is no sin in who we are. What the sin is, is not living up to everything you created us to be. Yes. Yes. Forgive us, God, for those of us that took a while to figure that out. <laughs> and help us, Lord, to live every day in the freedom that we know in the Spirit of God. We ask that you will bless us as we go our way. Keep Sean safe as he travels back home to see his partner, Brian, this evening. Yes, Lord. We pray that you will also bless us as we go out to eat wherever we go. <clears throat> bless the food and the nourishments of our bodies and our bodies to your servants. Thank you, God, for this wonderful season. Thank you for this wonderful, wonderful, blessed day. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus our Christ and all things that are holy. Amen. Amen. Shake hands and be friendly.